Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Make sure that you're pressing your notification bell after you subscribe to me so that you know when I post a video because honey child sometimes I don't even know when I'm gonna post a video. Today we're doing a true crime recap because I haven't done one in a very long time and we're doing an episode of Frenemies but this time we're gonna talk about Remy Ma and Makita Barnes Joseph. The story is freaking crazy. Let's get into the story. But one night, Remy, after her success with Lean Back and all this other stuff, you know, she's a rising star. She goes to a nightclub with her friend Crystal and she runs into Makita Barnes Joseph. Makita was at the club celebrating her 23rd birthday. Makita was totally opposite of Remy, whereas Remy was raised in the project. Sometimes she stayed with her grandmother in the Bronx. Makita was also in the Bronx, but Makita was on like Pelham Park, like <laughs> the nice area. And she came from like a, you know, nuclear family. She got her degree in marketing. So Makita was on the up and up. Despite these differences, these two women became the best of friends. So it got to the place where Remy actually would invite Crystal and Makita to industry events when she would attend them because, you know, they were cool like that. So it's Crystal's birthday now and the both of them, Remy Ma and Makita, decided they're both going to go there to this club to celebrate Crystal's birthday. So as Remy is leaving to go to this party for her friend she snatches three thousand dollars and just throws it in her purse because you know three thousand dollars is like twenty dollars to us so remy and the girls are partying hard they're dancing they're getting their lives and after a few hours remy asks makita to hold her purse remember her purse has three thousand dollars in it okay after remy has makita take her purse remy's out there on the dance floor dancing for her life makita feels a phone ring inside of her purse makita decides to go inside the purse take the phone out look at the phone she sees it's not anybody that she finds familiar she puts the phone back in the purse that's a little concerning. Why are you going inside of Remy's purse? Friend or not? If I'm holding my friend's pocketbook purse, whatever, I'm sorry. Don't don't date me, all right? Stop it. Um, okay, I just dated myself. But anyway, if I'm holding my friend's purse at a party and her phone goes off in her purse, it's not my business to go in her purse, look at the phone and see who's calling her. Like, why would I do that? All right, so only a few minutes later, Remy comes back. She retrieves her purse from Makita. They party hardy for a couple more hours. So at the end of the night, all the ladies are saying goodbye, you know, they're saying their goodbyes, mwah, mwah, you know, and they're walking towards their car. But as Remy goes into her purse to grab her car keys, she realizes that her $3,000 is missing. And Remy immediately suspects that Makita stole her money. So Remy confronts Makita about the missing money. Makita is denying that she stole the money. And Remy is angry. She's raging mad. Next thing you know, she gets into her car. She has inside her car a freaking gun that she keeps with her for protection. She rides up beside Makita in her car, which is really an SUV. The entire time, Remy is accusing her of stealing her money. Makita is still saying, you know, I didn't take your money. I don't know what happened, but I didn't take your money. So now Remy hops out of the car, still angry, and she now pulls out her gun towards Makita, accusing her of stealing her money. So Remy gets so angry that she opens Makita's door to her SUV and demands Makita empty out her purse. So Makita is in disbelief that Remy is pointing this gun at her. Makita knew that Remy had that gun for protection. The entire time Remy is in her face with the gun saying, you know, empty your purse. Makita doesn't feel like she should have to empty out her purse, you know, because she knows she didn't steal any money. She's saying, you know, what is wrong with you, Remy? Like, what is going on? Now, the entire time Makita is denying that she stole the money and Remy is, you know, accusing her and saying, you know, where's my money? Where's my money? Remy had the gun pointed towards Makita's abdomen. Without notice or warning, the gun freaking goes off into Makita's abdomen. So Makita says to Remy, you shot me. All Remy could focus on was going through her purse to find the money that was missing. So Remy goes through Makita's entire purse, dumps all the contents inside the car, and she doesn't find the money. 
And this is outside amongst all the party goers and the people that were in the club. So this is in front of an audience. And Remy's looking for this money. She's going through Makita's belongings. All while Makita is sitting there pretty much bleeding to death. So Makita is here begging her friend to get her help. And Remy couldn't care less. All she's thinking about is those bills that are missing. So instead of helping Makita, Remy actually demands that she get out of the car bleeding she's basically bleeding to death the lady just shot her in the stomach and remy wants her to get out of the damn car so makita's struggling to get away i don't know what was the purpose of making her get out of her car maybe so she can't chase her i don't know what the hell remy was thinking maybe she wasn't thinking so remy has her get out the car and then she jumps into her suv and she takes off remy drives only a few blocks away from where she just shot her friend and abandons her car in the meanwhile, Makita is rushed to the hospital where she is clinging to life. So within only 24 hours of shooting her friend, Remy turns herself in to the police. She claims that the shooting was an accident. Remy is charged with a list of crimes, including two counts of first degree assault. Meanwhile, Makita's family is keeping vigil by her side. The bullet did a lot of damage when it went into Makita and she was in intensive care. After a month, Makita was released from the hospital and she was left partially paralyzed, as you can see. And to add insult to injury, Remy came up with this defense that Makita shot herself so that she can come out with a big payday. So nine months later, Remy is sentenced to eight years for intentional assault. And girl, you're lucky that's all you got because you really could have got attempted murder and you could have got life in freaking prison. And back then from behind bars, Remy was trying to proclaim her innocence on the radio. I don't care if 12 million say guilty. I'm not telling y'all, all right, I'm wrong and I'm sorry for something that I didn't do. I don't gotta shoot no girls. I treat all my friends with nothing but respect and love. This time last year, they was all swimming in my pool. That was nothing but nice to them since day one. And tired of the freaking lies, Makita gets on the radio and gives her side of the story. Makita calls the same radio show to tell her side. It was me and Remy in that car. I know who shot me. She knew what she did. She didn't care. Remy was my girl. That was my girl. Like, if you see her anywhere, like, I was with her. Remy never reached out to me. All I hear is Remy pleading her innocence on the radio. She's doing this, and they killed me. All right, and as I was editing, I had to add this little tidbit at the end. We know what happens to Remy after she gets out of prison. First of all, she only did six years of her eight year prison sentence. She came out to make more movies and do more features and have more battles with other rappers. And back in 2007, Makita actually filed suit against her and it was a $20 million suit. And for some unknown reason that I cannot seem to find online, she withdrew the suit and never did go back and sue Remy for that money. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.